Hello everybody who's watching. Um, this is the third episode of the Racial Inequality podcast, where we discuss everything to do with race, everything to do with race, religion, and ethnicity, celebrating as well as discussing the issues and stigmas around it. So today we have a youth cabinet member as well as an ex-youth cabinet member who I'm going to be interviewing and we're going to be discussing what it's like to be a young black person in 2021. So Malachi, who are you and where are you from? Uh, yes, I'm Malachi. I live in Crawley. I used to go to Holy Trinity School, but I'm now attending a school in London. Um, yeah, that's really it. My parents um, came from Zimbabwe in about the year 2006. And yes, that's really it. I've lived here ever since. That's cool. And Mepesho, what about you? Okay, hi, my name is Mepesho. I'm 15. Um, I'm in year 10 and I live in Hawaii. My parents are both from Zambia, so that's next to Zimbabwe. But I'm the only one of my family born in the UK. My brothers are both born in Zambia, so they moved here in 2005 when I was born. That's interesting. And hi, I am Ifa. You've probably seen me before in here. Uh, both my parents are Sri Lankan. I was born and raised in the UK for most of my life. So I'm going to ask both of you, what is, what is it like to be a young black person in 2021 in the UK? Well, I would say that it was the same as 2020 and 2019, I guess. Um, of course, now the whole George Floyd thing, you can really feel the tension in certain areas, but not much to say about I can't feel different. It's kind of the same old thing again as well. So yeah, not much difference. Um, I agree with Benashe as well. I think there's there's not much difference, but there's still there's still definitely racism that goes on in school, outside of school, that's even to young people like our age, um, between young people as well, which is uh going on in schools as well. So I think it's I feel like Black Lives Matter movement definitely shifted people's awareness in how uh, maybe jokes they say or ways they address Black people could be racist, but I don't think there's been much difference, especially in Crawley. Yeah. Do you guys um, see that, especially with kind of the Black Lives Matter movement, do you guys feel like it was treated like a trend? Yes. In a way, yes. Yes. And I can kind of like I can kind of see how that is almost worse because people were kind of being performative and like, oh yeah, we're not racist. We like, we do this, we do that. But at the end of the day, they're still doing the same things. Is that how you guys feel? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think making it a trend tie kind of you know dilutes the actual problem and and how we address the issue as well because it you know when you in that situation all you have to do is post uh you know um a picture with a black fist in the air and you know it's, it's all good um but yeah i definitely think it has become a sort of trend yeah and i understand when it says like dilute issue because again like a lot of us will never understand what it's like to be a black person like we'll never have the same experiences like and i feel like when people say racism they all um BAME, they kind of group everyone together and expect we all experience the same kind of racism. Do you guys like see that or? I think that lots of different ethnic groups experience racism, but especially for, I feel like, like Southeast Asians, the it's more normal to like people to be racist towards them, which isn't okay. Um, definitely in schools, like, I feel like I've heard so many jokes and like well, they're not jokes but people just talking about like other people who are Southeast Asian in a way that's not okay and they feel like they have to accept it so like for example if they were like racist toward a black person it would be like the whole class would be like well what did you just say but it's okay to be racist to another race which isn't okay yeah for sure um so kind of sticking to the theme of school have you guys sort of experienced racial discrimination at school? In uh, outside of school, no, no. Um, oh, I, I don't think I've ever experienced direct racial discrimination. I think 
I've been lucky to go to schools where there have been quite a few black people. So I was never really in the minority and at the, you know, and I never experienced any sort of racism. If there was racism, which I don't think you'd call racism, but there were those jokes that black people would tell to, to each other. So, um, no, I've never really experienced racism, but I do realize that there are many others who unfortunately are, you know, subjects to that those type of, um, you know, that type of discrimination. I mean, if you go to certain schools in certain areas of the country where you tend to be really in the minority, it, it might, I don't think people would say it directly to you, but it could be as small as, you know, not inviting you to parties, not inviting you to sleepovers and stuff like that. And I think that is sort of the same thing. I don't feel like um, it's, like I've never been called a racial slur outright by someone at school or outside of school, but I've definitely gotten like weird looks. I feel like especially a topic that not many people talk about is like hair. So like I usually wear my hair in braids, but when I was younger, I never used to because I didn't like them. But like kids in my school would say like, oh, why, isn't, why doesn't your hair move? Like, why, why does it feel like that? Like, so I thought it wasn't normal. So I started wearing braids a lot. So I feel like that, um, is it, it I didn't know what racism was back then like if you would have told me oh they're being that's bullying that's racism I wouldn't have I would have thought oh like I didn't know that but it, it is and um it's you have to realize that racism isn't always just being called like a slur or being like excluded from something like very in the open it's it's it often happens behind closed doors and when people aren't filming and um yeah so kind yeah, of like with your hair, sorry, with your hair as well. Do you like? Did you always kind of notice that you were kind of different with the way you looked compared to like other kids here? Yeah, definitely. Um, I I would have like <laughs> I would have done anything just to be like white with blue eyes. Like that's all I wanted when I was younger. But um, it took me a long time to realize that it's my hair and it's not like. Of course, my hair's not going to be straight and like you know. It's not going to like when it goes through a flat iron, it's not going to look like everyone else's because it's not everyone else's hair. It's my hair and it's different. Yeah, I feel like lots of young girls, maybe not so much anymore. Um, and especially now because there's loads and loads of black people in my school. So it's not something that I struggle with anymore. But it's especially as a young, younger girl, I've heard loads of stories of my friends as well. When they were younger, so. As like a minority, like. I've kind of had like a similar experience where I was like, um, I felt excluded because of how I looked because I'm brown skinned or because my hair was actually when I was younger was very curly as well, um, like South Asian curly and I didn't like my hair and I was like, oh, well, uh, I would like ask to straighten it and stuff like that. But yeah, I can, I can, like I can empathize with you as well, like completely. Are you guys worried about kind of going into adulthood? As like a black person going into adulthood? Yeah, as well as just kind of in general, like especially like leaving school, going to work. Um, no, I, I, I don't think I have um, worried about adulthood, but you know, you do, you hear these stories of universities, you know, discriminating against a certain race, you know, a certain race. And so you wonder oh, if I apply for this, one of those red brick universities will I be judged based on my name because my because my um, first name is an African sounding name and so of course you know it puts me in a position where I I do at times think will I be treated differently before they've actually gotten to know who I am so yeah there's nothing I lose sleep over though so yeah um I've definitely given a lot of thought to growing up and being an adult um, especially in like the last year going into year 10 was kind of a shift for me but I mean I'm still really young <laughs> but um, I I don't think it's like uh, it's same as Malachi I haven't really like lost sleep over it but it's definitely kind of like I'll always kind of have to be kind of cautious and I feel like every black person feels the same way because I mean even though there's so much like injustice in our world the, um, we're never going to have world peace so we kind of just have to live with that in the way uh the choices we make so like he said schools and stuff like there might be a teacher who's racist toward you but it's not your fault it's not 
uh, you in the wrong if they if they are or if people are like students and stuff. So yeah, it's not a big worry of mine, but it's definitely in the back of my mind sometimes. Yeah, for sure. And like, so especially like I guess like with your names as well. Like, do you often worry that they'll judge you based on your name rather than like your grade or your like extracurricular and like your just like all the other things that you'll put in unis or work applications, do you often worry that you wouldn't well, get chosen just because of like Yeah, well, there is there is that worry because as being part of that minority, you uh you kind of in a way represent your race. And so if your race um has gotten this bad reputation by a few people, people start to generalize or um or black or Asian people or you know foreigners is that in that way you do at times worry that you know, when, when you apply for this job you know you might have better grades or better level of qualifications but uh, at the end of the day because you have got this because you have thought you're thought to be to act in this certain way you are discriminated against but you know it's it's, it's one of those things that I hope would have changed by the by the time I, I have to apply for university or go to uh, go to apply for a job because I've seen how we have moved since like 2001 to 2021 and so I am I am optimistic for the future yes. I feel like my name sometimes um, it's definitely hard for people to pronounce and if obviously if you see a name like Grace or like Emma like she could be she could be any nationality right but if you saw my name you think oh she's black so you immediately have this like it maybe you're not even doing it out of a place of you don't like black people but it's just a subconscious thing that's kind of built into us that everybody does these days so you think oh immediately she's black and have stereotypes um okay. about who i am maybe so i feel like yeah it's definitely gonna i mean i hope it's changed i think it has but i hope it won't be a, an issue anymore but it's definitely been an issue of like people in school pronouncing my name you know twisting it and making it sound into like bad words or whatever um and what always baffled me is kind of like there's one other black girl but we get mixed up and when there's like six white girls with the same name no one ever gets them mixed up but when there's two of us you get us mixed up so I don't know that definitely says something about like the way in schools we approach like people who are not the same race as us. Do you, do you like feel like um, people aren't trying as well to, like, I, I feel like that's a like similar thing, like, oh, a hijab. So you see two hijabis and they're always getting mixed up and we look nothing alike. Like there is like, everyone is different. Like, like yeah, you're black or you wear a hijab or you're brown or Asian or whatever, but you are still different. There is like clear differences between everyone. I don't know why you don't like acknowledge that almost. You don't like be like, oh, she's different to her. Like there is a clear difference. People don't look that similar. Yeah, there are people who do look quite similar, but most of the time they don't. So it's just kind of like, again, like generalizing. Like Also, I guess like with your hair as well, like do you think, cause I know in some workplaces, like professional haircut is like very different to your hair. and you yeah. can't really change your hair, but do you guys? I I think that unfortunately, that becomes more of a problem for girls than it does for boys because you know, um, as as it's become this type of style, you know, you can do whatever you want with your hair. Whereas I think, for um, unfortunately, girls tend to be more conscious about um, about their hair. And so yes, yeah, so, yeah, I don't think it's much of a problem for me. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, I agree with what you said. Um, hair is really like a big topic that lots of people miss and don't really talk about as racism when discriminating someone like me against my hair is is racism. Um, and it's 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 really like I, I've had the looks of people like going on a walk or something with my afro out and like people looking at me like like I feel those looks you know what I mean like it's not something that like I can see you looking at me looking at my hair like this is my hair I don't you know this is my hair like it's it's not weird it's not 
it's natural like this is me you know what I mean so um yeah I feel like uh workplaces do need to kind of uh think about like um kind of the rules they're making and I feel like schools do as well because I knew so I, I know this girl at school and because obviously in your braid you'd have different colors and everything and things like that and it's always so pretty and I like I love your hair by the way it's, <laughs> thank it's, you it's so pretty but I knew this girl and she had like red like at the bottom um she had like red hair at the bottom and she had like beads in her hair mm -hmm. and like I like I don't know but is are the beads like traditional like the um yeah I think yeah yeah I think they are um I know loads of girls like to do like beads in different colors and stuff um they are like kind of I'm not sure about like the whole history of it and I'm not sure what certain cultures have more beads in their braids or like corners or what type of braids they have but yeah I, I would say they are yeah yeah well this girl got like caught ahead of you and was like yeah you can't have this yeah I don't have this hair but then you have girls who are like blonde and have like dyed their hair like naturally red and yeah. I, was, like, I always wonder like what the difference is it's still your hair it's yeah like I f yeah, I feel like, again, like hair is like a massive issue that isn't spoken about enough. Yeah. And especially like young black girls when they get their hair done, it's like such a fun thing, like thinking about what hairstyle am I going to get? Like, and they're sitting in the hairdressers for like five hours and then finally getting it done. It's like the best feeling in the world. So when someone kind of tries to take that away from you, when someone tries to just one comment or like one, why does your hair like, is your hair fake? Like all these questions I used to get, I'm so used to getting them. I shouldn't be used to getting them because they're not things that people should be saying, but like rope head, mop head, all these things. <laughs> but um, it's like one of the most fun things getting your hair done. So I think that um, people should learn to, um, you know, it's fine to ask questions, but it's, the way that we kind of you know we need to like appreciate others every hair like texture and style because yeah. it's special to people yeah. i guess kind of sticking to like the workplace topic like what do you guys if there is any change you kind of want for the future of like your like when you're going to work or education like what are some changes you want to make um, what do you mean changes in work and like how you're treated or like how they treat you? Well, um, I, I, I don't know how I can answer that question because it's hard to force someone into loving or liking another person if you already are prejudiced or um, against them. That's why I would always, uh, I think in the racial debates last time I addressed the issue of my younger cousin, I'm not sure if you remember and how I think if we are to like teach younger children, not about racism necessarily, but to teach each other that, you know, white, black, brown, we're all the same people. And I think, I think targeting the younger generation will definitely help as time goes on. And so, yeah, I, I don't know how, I don't think legislations or laws <clears throat> would change how people are treated in work. If you don't want someone to, succeed you can and you're the boss you can definitely stop them from succeeding anyways so it's about targeting the young and how things change as time goes on what about you pressure yeah i agree with what you said it's it's really down to the the person like you could have so many laws but if the people themselves are because racism can still go on no matter how illegal it could be um it could become in like five ten years um in the workplaces um it could still be people being racist to you in the workplace so um I, I would say the changes I want to see happen is that someone like who looks like me would not feel uh like they have to change how they look or like they have to compromise themselves to be able to look acceptable in a workplace in this country I would say that's a change I want to see I don't know how that would be made but I feel like that's not some somewhere we are at yet what is something you wish people knew about you like especially like when it comes to like stereotypes and things like that oh that not all black people are the same uh, um that's one of the problems with being the minority you know you you represent your whole race and if a black person was to kill a, a police officer you'll be like oh black people are killers 
Whereas if someone who was in the majority, like a, a white person was to kill a, a police officer, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. You just you would blame the person. And I, I do think that when change does come, which I think is happening at the moment, people will start to judge based on the content of one's character as opposed to generalizing based on the actions of one particular person. And yeah, I, I think that's what I would like to see happening in people to see me as a person you know that who you know I, I am who I am and I I don't necessarily belong to a particular group of people just because you know just because they're black people uh, um, I, I think I think being able to act in your own way and people embracing that not because and real and fight and real and realizing that we are all part of one community regardless of our color do you also see, think like the media has a big impact? So like like you said, like if a white person were to kill a white, a white person, it's like you judge the character. But I feel like news headlines are like, oh, man kills person. But when it's like a black man, it's like black man murders policeman ruthlessly or like some dramatic and defamatory almost statement to make everyone look bad. Do you guys like notice that? And how do you feel about that? Um, yeah, I, I definitely noticed that. Um, yeah, especially with black people like in the news, um, it's definitely, people become kind of scared of saying the word black, especially now in schools. And um, I feel like it's because of what they've seen on the news. Like, I, I haven't really heard m many people talking like openly about George Floyd, like it's very hush hush. And not many people want to talk about it anymore but I feel like the media does have a really big um, impact good and bad on the way we talk about racism now because it, the media like whatever it is like social media or like the news it makes people you know shift their opinions about what they think about black people and um, especially on like the topic of colorism I know that's not really what you asked but that's definitely become a big issue especially in like school with teenagers now because when someone says black you know they immediately think like oh light skin light eyes like long hair but as soon as it's like a dark skin girl with really short hair and brown eyes they're like oh well no like I've heard this girl saying oh if I was black I'd want hair like up to here but no shorter than that but that's not realistic you know what I mean black people are all different we're not all the same like there are groups and like stereotypes and whatever but you know you are who you are because of you not because of your skin like your skin has an impact on how you live your life and like um, you know, the choices you make and, you know, the things you do, but it's not you, you know what I mean? Like, I've been asked before, like, why do you talk like a white girl? Like, what is, what is that meant to mean? Like, why do you like, why are you like smart or like, why do you act white? Like, what is that meant to mean? Like, can I not be, can I not like have aspirations and stuff? Like, is that because of my skin or like, I don't know, but yeah. I, I think that's super offensive when you say yeah. are you acting white why are you talking like a white person because what is supposed to what is black then yeah how is a I, black person meant to talk I, I I think on that particular problem we have to look at black people as well because I I guarantee well most people um I don't think you would find a white person who would directly say to you why are you acting white but it would rather it would mostly be black people saying oh why are you acting white and so I think on that particular topic, we have to start questioning ourselves and how we're treating our own, our own race and our own people. Are we being fair to ourselves? And you know, you might, might, might be because you know we've grown up in a society where that's generally been the case. But we need to start changing ourselves first before we blame um, anyone else. And yes, the whole thing about acting smart. You know, so if you're acting smart, if you act so, if black, if, if white is acting smart, then. Um, how do you act black then? So these are the questions that you need, we need to ask ourselves as well as the system, or not the system, but other people as well need to address this, to address this in this issue. Because I know um, people who are from certain continents around the world are definitely, you know, perceived as smart people, you know, particularly Asians. Um, but if you were to get um, a black person, well, you're generally, you're not thought of as, typically bright and so I don't think it helps when another black person contributes also contributes to that by asking their own race off oh, why are you acting white you know we need to stop being in a way racist to ourselves yeah. yeah there's definitely racism within the black community as well 
like with you know seeing stuff like why are you acting white like I don't know what what that's what that's meant to mean and like the colorism as well between people saying oh well you have to be light skin you have to be brown skin dark skin like we're just so we were not made to be obsessed over in this way but like you know we live I believe we live in a fallen world so that's why all of this that's why we're in this mess in the first place that's why um you know people are getting killed and voices aren't being heard and we're being shut down and racism exists because of that but um yeah I think there's definitely racism within the black community I find that with all communities they have some form of colorism like again like in my community I know darker skinned people get treated differently compared to lighter skinned people I'm a lighter skinned person for my race but my sister on the other hand she's darker skinned so there's kind of colorism within that as well and I feel like that's like another issue that needs to be kind of talked about as well do you I was reading up something on colorism and I read it was to do with like colonization how obviously the white people who were um kind of obviously these rich people they stay inside and they were obviously lighter however the people who worked outside were because obviously working in the sun and things they got darker and that was kind of how you differentiated different classes almost but I think it's kind of really interesting how it stemmed from that like how it stemmed from white people almost because of colonialism and then kind of fed into generations and what do you guys think about kind of like the media on kind of especially like actors and actresses on kind of this issue uh well the media is the media there it's good and bad parts um i do think at times the media is responsible for you know exacerbating certain situations that don't need to be taken to particular levels and then i do think that when the topic becomes a bit touchy at times um they tend to you know um they, they tend to slow it down and you know, abandon certain topics but i do think with the whole race issue the media has played its part especially with the george floyd thing of course people are making it a trend but i i don't think anyone can say that they haven't heard about the killing of george floyd now and so now that we've got phones you know people are taking videos of these things that are happening and so we do find out you know it's I mean, a few years ago, 50 years ago, that wouldn't have happened. People wouldn't have found out about George Floyd. But um, I, I do think the media has been helpful in that respect, yes. I feel like it's uh, going to, like, you know, entertainment and everything. There's not much, uh, like, I know there are loads of, loads of, loads and loads of Black actors, and they're starting to come up more, and there's more representation, like, definitely, like, film and TV and everything, but it's it's very whenever there's like a movie with like black actors and actresses it immediately becomes about race and I don't know I just feel like in the future I definitely want to see more like especially with things like um I've heard people talk about like love interest why isn't the love interest like a brown girl or a black girl why are they always white you know what I mean so I feel like um there should definitely be more uh especially for like the younger kids who are going to grow up there should be more like uh like actresses and like actors they can look up to and say like, like oh she's smart like she looks like me like Disney princesses like there was only one and she was a frog for half of the movie and I was like why are there like seven other white ones and I wanted to be Belle and everything but um but no yeah it's it's just something like that small girl see and like say oh she looks like me and she's smart she can do it like I can do it too like it's just like it's just a small thing like like you know the, the actors that we cast and stuff makes such a huge difference in like the way young kids are growing up because we're consuming this media so much so you know they should at least think about like who are they uh putting to represent black people and, and brown people and asians and you know <laughs> like latin americans and everything yeah also um recently i was um, i think i said to my mom but um on the news you only um ever see a black person on the news when it's got something to do about like um, rap music and stuff and i'm not hating against rap music i think it's fine but when you know you know you don't see a black doctor talking about covid 19 or being interviewed and stuff like that but whenever it's to do with you know uh, 
you know, rap music and this and that and something stereotypical. You know, you, you see a black person right on the camera and then I think it's a way of hiding certain truths. But yeah, I think that can definitely be improved. It's kind of like saying we have diversity, but mm -hmm. it's it's like we do have diversity, but in different sectors. And again, like I've never noticed that what you've mentioned, Malachi. And uh, yeah, like now that you say it, like I kind of understand, like, yeah, like this is kind of happening. And it's kind of, again, like, like you said, hiding the truth as well. And like what you said as well, my pleasure about like Disney princesses, like, again, like for me, like, for, like you guys, how it is like Princess Tiana, who was kind of the ones you know, I looked up to Princess Jasmine because she was like brown. But she was, but they mixed cultures up. They mixed Arab and Indian culture up. And then I was just like, oh, she looks like me, so I like her. But I look at it now and I'm like, that's a bit, you guys really didn't research into it, did you? And yeah, like, I, I see how unfair it is. And do you guys notice when casting characters, people of color in general, they tend to go for, again, like lighter actresses, like, they put like Zendaya, like I love Zendaya, but yeah, I'm Zendaya. Zendaya. But um, especially with like um, like I remember when uh Joe Biden became president. Well, that was like last month, huh? But uh, with Kamala Harris, like all the girls in school were saying like she's black. Like I didn't know she was black. Um, but the way they were like, I, I before I saw her face, they were like, uh, it's the first like black woman to be a vice president or something. And I looked and I was like, oh. But I feel like, yeah, it's in um, like uh, in TV and like film as well, especially with like Zendaya and like, they would like, like obviously to the media and like to the world, like they would want to cast her because she's light skin and she has this hair and she's, she's tall and everything. And she's like physically, that's what people think black people look like. But there's just, if you just have to look around, you just have to like, you know, go to a school or something to see how many like, different skin colors, there are different hair types, different, you know, eye colors. There's there's all different kinds of black people and we can't just limit ourselves to seeing one type on TV. And um, yeah. For sure. I think it was a kind of sets a bad example almost kind of like, obviously like these are amazing people that we're starting to get, but when you have only one certain type of people, that's what people expect to see. Yeah. Um, when it's not that kind of person they're like, like, why? like yeah and I think this is a huge issue but I guess we could be talking about this all day but I guess to kind of wrap this up now what is a, an advice you would give to a young black person going through racism well I guess I would say to try and embrace your identity maybe research uh, now I know we are all one people but I think really trying to find heroes whom you would look up to, so who are in your own race as well, or start to see, oh, well, for example, Martin Luther King, you look at him and say, well, he's a black person, but he's not necessarily, um, you know, a, a rapper behind um, behind a jail cell, so, or you look at somebody else, uh, or so, you know, some people might look up to, I don't know, um, Mahatma Gandhi, some look up to Winston Churchill, so, um, and I think that there's a problem with the lack of knowledge of famous stars, intellectual stars who are black. We tend to hear of, you know, basketball players, actors, maybe a few actors, but we don't really understand well, you know, these people came before us and were talking about education being the key, but you don't really hear about that type of stuff in school. And I, I do realize that that might be because we are in, a country which is you know predominantly white and we are in England so we'll have to there'll be a focus on English heroes as well but I think when we do talk about world history it's important to talk about people who actually were impactful and I think that's definitely how I would get through certain racial tensions within school or outside of school just embrace embrace who you are so maybe sometimes telling people isn't the best opportunity or the best thing to do embrace who you are and accepts who you are as well and there's nothing to be embarrassed about yeah I would tell uh, a young person or even my youngest self 
that being black is not bad being black is good you know it's like it's an honor that's what my my parents always tell me um and I really I do believe that I, I hope that every young person knows that as well but yeah especially what Malachi just said about like role models as well like Martin Luther King um I've forgotten her name but there's a movie about her called Hidden Figures uh this woman who worked for NASA I think she's a black woman and she she did the sums that I can't even do on a calculator like in her head and that's just so like wow like it's just taught me to definitely take my education like this is do you know her name the Kathy Johnson or something I watched the movie. yeah yeah <laughs> I watched the movie yeah so good yeah but it's it's a really good film if you want to like you know kind of educate yourself a bit but um yeah I'm gonna watch that <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really good. Um, but yeah, you know, like she does, she did like calculations that I can't even do on a calculator, like in her head. And it just like what's like my attitude to school is not is not that. I wish it was like that, but it's 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 not most of the time. And um, there are so many just like black people from the past who have just changed the way that the world thinks. And without them, I don't think that we would we wouldn't be learning the things that we do in school today. And Maybe I wouldn't even be going to this school. I would probably be back in Zambia if it weren't for some of these people. So um, I would say embrace who you are, like embrace everything, your hair, your skin, like don't worry about stereotypes. So if people say like, why aren't you? Why do you act white? Or like, no, no, you're you for a reason. Like black is good. Black is, is amazing um, and embrace that, yeah. Um, I just want to thank both of you for your time and your amazing, contributions and I, I've learned a lot today I truly have and hopefully everybody listening has as well um yeah thank you thank you both for making the time to come on here um please follow the podcast for more episodes as well as our social medias all under the name of your space west sussex so yeah thank you for watching and goodbye <laughs>